What's up, peeps? Like we said today, we're talking all about the SpongeBob movie Chum Buckets, <laughs> but in real life, right? Um, some some awesome scientists who are turning jellyfish into cyborgs. Which Before we, I think this is the first time we're talking about cyborgs, by the way. I don't think it, we've it ever may be done one it. of the first cyborg yeah. episodes we've ever covered. My grandpa who listens to every single episode of the podcast by the way will probably check us on that and be sure but before we jump into that i actually want to do a little passion plug moment do it plug uh, it in let us see that passion. some awesome news we just started a newsletter guys we're gonna make it great um imagine all the interesting and impactful technology we bring to you in the audio format and we send you on social media etc we're gonna do our darndest to write the best newsletter we've ever read. Um, very similar to how we worked hard to create a podcast that we didn't think existed in the marketplace that, that we're going to do the same thing with this newsletter. And we think it's going to be great. You've got the opportunity to join now and be one of our founding readers. Um, I, I don't know how exactly we'll appreciate you, but we'll find a way to do it. Maybe it's like with we some swag will. or something, but we, we need to appreciate you as one of our founding readers. We're going to include a direct link to uh sign up for the newsletter and the show notes you should check that out um but also you can just type it into your browser right now if you're listening the next and then click on the button read and you can join the newsletter it takes honestly like two less seconds than, yeah less than 10 seconds yeah depending on how fast you can type your email it might take do you two have five g yeah you know, that's that's the big question that's true here. that's true but you know for folks I, I like to think of us as consumers of our own you know content yeah sometimes i don't have time for a podcast Sometimes I just want to see what's going on without having to listen to a whole 20 minute episode, even though we try to make it quick and concise and whatnot. This is a great way to get that content. It takes, we even give you an estimate when you open it up, it says this will take a minute to read, minute and a half to read. The commitment is low, but the sauce is still juicy. Well, yeah, I, I love that. <laughs> Thank you. The sauce is still juicy. I thought of it and, and said it. Like our goal is with the podcast we're going to try to make it as good as we can. We would appreciate your feedback. Mm -hmm. But the first step for all that, we'd hope you'd be willing to trust us on this and just go sign up for the newsletter. So please check that out. We've got it linked in the show notes or you can go to thenextbyte.com, click on the button read, and it should take you anywhere from two to 10 seconds to sign up. Start reading. Yeah. All right. Now on that, that we're, done, <laughs> we're done with our done with our passion plug, uh, I want to jump into today's article, which is about building bionic jellyfish mm -hmm for ocean exploration. This is an awesome topic coming out of Caltech. Mm -hmm. um, and essentially what they're working on here is trying to instrument jellyfish, turn them literally into cyborgs um, to help us explore the ocean. But I, th I think it starts with a pretty interesting story. Mm -hmm. This team at Caltech was trying to look at jellyfish and gain some inspiration about how jellyfish swim in the ocean and use that as inspiration to build a new robot that was incredibly efficient, right? Jellyfish are one of the most, I think the most efficient swimmer in all the ocean. Um, they can't do anything besides swim, sting, eat, and breed. They don't even have brains. Yet somehow jellyfish are everywhere in the ocean. They've explored every part of the ocean in a way that humans, despite all of our hard work and all of our technology, jellyfish reach places of the ocean that we can't reach. Exactly. Like some of our best and brightest have developed systems that can go deep into the ocean, but this brainless, I was going to say massless, but it's not massless. This like a blob can go even deeper. Yeah. The, the jellyfish can go everywhere. The jellyfish have seen everything. And honestly, the ocean's our last frontier on earth. Yeah. It's the only place of earth really that we and truly it's mostly unexplored, feel yeah. like we haven't explored. Um, there's a lot of desire from the scientific community to understand what's going on in the deep ocean. And pretty much every way you do that, um, I'm going to try not to make too many jokes about that <laughs> failed billionaire submarine, but like pretty much every time to explore the deep ocean either involves spending a lot of money, spending a lot of energy, using a lot of resources. And honestly, most of them haven't even been super productive, right? So submarines are cool. Um, we can't even get as deep with submarines as jellyfish can swim. So this team was looking at jellyfish as an inspiration. Let's say, oh, let's, let's learn how they swim. Let's learn how they're designed to build a new robot. Well, I think it's also worth noting that the folks that were looking at this, the jellyfish movement, um, they're from the aerospace department, if I'm not mistaken. I think so. Yeah. So they were focused on fluid dynamics here. They wanted to understand how this thing is moving so effectively in the water so that they could draw inspiration from that. And, and so they're, they're looking at, like you said, uh, the aerodynamics, or in this case, the hydrodynamics of how a jellyfish swims. 
you know, they're, they're super efficient from an energy perspective. Mm -hmm. So from, from how many calories they consume to how much movement they're able to generate from that, they're the most efficient swimmers in the ocean. So they're saying, let's study this, let's learn, let's figure out how the movement works. And then at, at some point they came to a realization, how about instead of trying to use jellyfish as inspirations to build a new robots, just use the jellyfish. <laughs> let's just use the jellyfish themselves. So jellyfish don't have brains. Um, honestly, they're not even super hydrodynamic, let's say. So they, they saw this as an opportunity to one instrument, the jellyfish, um, see if there's any opportunity to just basically throw a bunch of sensors on a jellyfish, um, and, and kind of collect all the data while the jellyfish swim around. It, it kind of reminds me of when we talked about farmers using smart seeds, mm -hmm. right? That they'll just kind of like spread these seeds and they'll go, they'll go into the land and then you'll get some feedback with all these sensors that are spread out everywhere in the world. Um, then they took a step further and they're like, no, no, no. Instead of just making, you know, jellyfish being smart jellyfish with a bunch of sensors on them, let's see what we can do to make jellyfish swim faster and swim deeper and swim better than they already swim. Um, they were able to modify in, in, in some minor ways the, the hydrodynamics of the jellyfish, and they were also able to basically create a pacemaker <laughs> to force the jellyfish to swim even faster. Um, yeah, I mean, essentially, they were like, what if we became a parasite for this yeah. jellyfish that just made its life better? Yeah. Like, we're not even going to make it worse. We're going to make everything better. It's going to win. We're going to win symbiotic relationship, right? And it, it's crazy. I Like, so I, I want to kind of jump into what they've achieved here and, and with the um i think there's two main ingredients to the secret sauce and we kind of alluded to them already but the first of them is this electronic pacemaker so what they did is they basically added this little gadget it's like a little tiny machine that goes inside the jellyfish and it controls how fast this how fast they swim so it already makes use of their natural super efficient swimming style but it basically prompts the jellyfish to pulse and je jellyfish blob or swim more often right they're, they're able to achieve three times swimming speed mm -hmm. the first time that they um implemented this this pacemaker and when i first read this i'm like oh man so are they just going to make jellyfish swim <laughs> twice as fast and they're going to run out of energy and they're going to die like are, are jellyfish swimming like this suicide mission swimming yeah. this slow for a reason but we were talking about this before we started and you're saying no i think this is how jellyfish eat as well. It's exactly. How they swim around. Yeah. So, so them swimming is actually kind of a byproduct of them trying to find like food to eat as they go and do that jellyfish jellying motion. They're intaking water and then getting particles that they use for energy out of it. Now, this pacemaker, the reason it's so fascinating is that it disrupts their natural frequency of, let's say, like one, one jellyfish, one jellyfish move per yeah, second. I don't, we don't even. Is there a technical jelly? term for us to call that? You know what? This is my fault. If I paid attention to SpongeBob as a kid doing all those dances, I probably would have picked up on the term. But we didn't. So here we are. Uh, but essentially, it disrupts that pattern and it makes it so that there's more repetition. It's a higher frequency. Mm -hmm. um, and it ends up making them three times as fast with the, uh, with the pacemaker. But they only consume twice as much food. So... They're moving a lot faster, but their intake isn't linearly going even up with that. So they're they're getting more food. Okay. Well, that's that's not a bad thing. Yeah. You know, we're not we're not destroying the jellyfish population. And by the way, you know what? No, we'll get to it later. Go on. Go on. I, I was Keep gonna talking. say the, the second part, I think, of the the secret sauce here is um they, they wanted to find some space to add these sensors, mm -hmm. right? And in addition, when they're studying the hydrodynamics of the jellyfish, they're saying, wow, they've got a really super efficient swimming style, but the the front, the top of the jellyfish, the let's blubba. say, the, the dome blobby <laughs> part, um, it's a round circle. That's great, but it actually could be conical, right? Mm -hmm. If it was a cone, that would be even more hydrodynamic and help them swim even more efficiently. So they, they created this, they call it the forebody, but I'm just going to call it the hat. Um, they made this hat that sits on top of the jellyfish and it looks kind of like a cone, um, a rounded off cone. And it's a specially designed hat. It sits on the jellyfish. It holds all the sensors. Um, think about like, it, it's like the soft or is the sharp tip, the end of an arrow helps them split through the water faster, but it also creates space to hold all the sensors. Um, so not only does it help them hold all their scientific instruments, it also helps the jellyfish swim even faster than the three times they got with the pacemaker. I think when they do pacemaker plus four body, jellyfish are able to swim four and a half times four faster. And a half. That, that's awesome. And by the way, uh, I, I really want to point this out. I feel like if it was just a group of marine biologists that were looking at this, they probably wouldn't have grabbed onto 
oh, like, how can we make this uh, this jellyfish swim more air or hydrodynamically? Yeah. Right. But because they were aerodynamicists and they were looking at the fluid mechanics, and I, if I'm not mistaken, they even said as they were studying the jellyfish, they put it into like liquid that had these particles that could be, um, you know, lit up by shining a laser at it. So they could see the small uh, flow of, of these fluids. They were able to pick up that there's actually improvements we can make on the head of this blobby part. Mm -hmm. So that's that's the beauty of bringing these two worlds together is that you get insight from an area that is not traditionally associated with biology and understanding the sea and how jellyfish move to begin with. And and one of the things that I thought was really cool is they when they implemented this, well, I guess two things, right? One of them that they had this focus the whole time, they're like, jellyfish don't have brains. We're basically creating a brain for these jellyfish that prompt it to swim deeper, that prompt it to swim in a certain way and a certain speed to help us collect a bunch of information for mm-hmm. science purposes. Um, but they also wanted to do this in a way that they felt was ethical. Mm-hmm. So they, in, as part of their research group, I think they called it a bioethicist. Um, they brought in a bioethicist to make sure that what they were doing, they were achieving it in a very ethical manner. One of the ways that you mentioned is like, oh, they don't want to make it swim so fast that it uses up all its energy and dies. So they they actually tuned this pacemaker to make it swim three times faster, but it only consumes two times more energy. So it's actually right. getting more food than it needs because of the way that it's swimming. One of the other things that they did is they also... Um, specifically designed the forebody. That's this had this hat that sits on top of the bell of the jellyfish. Um, they use 3D printers to kind of create ballasts in there um, to make sure that this hat held enough air in it to make sure that the jellyfish still swim upright, even with all the extra weight mm-hmm. on it. it. Think think about like about the weight and size of a softball. That's all the extra um, instruments that they've added to the jellyfish. Um, also make sure that it doesn't tip over and sink with all the extra weight. So they've got some air, some water in there um, to make sure that the jellyfish still is able to swim upright, which is the way that it is designed to swim. Um, So I I appreciated the nuanced approach that they took here. Absolutely. One, to take advantage of of the jellyfish, let's say, but make it more symbiotic than parasitic. So they're benefiting the jellyfish. We're benefiting from the jellyfish. Jellyfish are able to swim faster. They're able to cover more ground, which is beneficial for our scientific studies, but it also helps them stay upright, helps them get more food. Um, In in this case, it truly feels like a win-win. And this is all based off of a bunch of like literal rocket scientists yeah. looking at jellyfish saying, how can we use this to help explore the ocean? And I'll, I'll extend your point of being ethical and, you know, for our fellow humans that care about the ecosystem and other animals and living beings, um, I think you'd like to know that jellyfish don't actually have a nervous system, so they can't feel pain, which means I, I feel like when they put the head on, if I'm not mistaken, it's kind of like a stake that goes into the jellyfish. Um, it doesn't feel any pain during the administration as it has it on and then even after it's done doing its mission they can take it out and the jellyfish has no damage to it so it can go on living its life without any issues which i think is amazing yeah me too and um another thing i was going to point out is when it came to their testing um i think again it's worth noting because they're aerodynamicists they mentioned that they specifically did not want to test in a horizontal tank because you know they they know it can go forward and backward but where they wanted to see the fruits of their labor really come to fruition was what happens as this thing's going to try to dig deep and go underwater. Mm-hmm. So they built a very large vertical tank and then they had the jellyfish try to go down while they were essentially pushing a stream of water at it to emulate that pressure. And that's how they were able to achieve the four and a half times uh, efficiency and being faster. And, and accurately measuring. And accurately measuring it. Yeah. I, I thought the vertical aquarium was really cool as well. But honestly, like, just looking at this, right? They started with jellyfish are the ocean's most efficient swimmers. How can we copy exactly what they're doing <laughs> in, in one of our own robots to help study yeah. study the ocean? Um, and then it turns into this situation where they're actually just putting the instruments straight on the jellyfish. Mm-hmm. This whole um, pacemaker and uh, hat, let's call it, set up the, these two main parts cost, I think, a little bit less than $20. Yep. Um, and these jellyfish robots can swim in deep water. They can swim in shallow water. They can swim in hot water. They can swim in cold water. Um, same species of jellyfish thrive just as well in, in, you know, the waters in the Arctic circle as they do in the tropic waters of the Caribbean. So it's like, 
no no preference from the jellyfish perspective um and they're trying to build sensor packages that can also withstand those ranges of temperatures and pressures and that's the challenge and that's the challenge which is yeah. again just shows just how awesome jellyfish are so they're still working on the specific sensors that they're going to put on this and then go send these out into the real world but one of the things that i thought was worth mentioning is that this is like a much cheaper and more innovative way of exploring all over the ocean um one of the things that they mentioned is if you were to try and uh take like one of these like robotic submarines and rent it for a day to run it underwater it would cost fifty thousand dollars per day i'm thinking <laughs> man you can put out 2500 robotic <laughs> jellyfish for the cost of running running a uh running a robotic submarine for just one day yeah and these these jellyfish could go all over the ocean they could run for days 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 i i don't even know the the battery life on these things so to speak but I'm guessing you can run these for a really long time. Absolutely. These robotic jellyfish versus just getting one day out of a ro robotic submarine. This seems like one of the potential ways that we could truly start to explore the ocean as our final frontier. For sure. Collect areas of interest, collect a lot of data, and then maybe go send in our robotic submarine to do some close-up exploration. Yeah, and even in tune with like kind of what we're talking about respecting our ecosystem with climate change kind of accelerating with the growth of our population and you know, our emissions and whatnot, um, being able to deploy so many smart sensors into the ocean that can explore and, you know, go to the varying depths while collecting data like temperatures, salinity, oxygen levels, things like that, which these sensor packages can, by the way, um, we can gather a lot of data about how our ocean is changing with very little money which is great because more data, more analysis means better understanding of our planet and what we're doing to it. So even like taking a step back from deep ocean exploration, you know, cause they're still figuring out the sensor package and whatnot. This has direct value add to marine biologists, environmental, um, environmental scientists, so on and so forth. Yeah, I, I agree. Right. And yeah. we, we've talked on this podcast a lot about trying to monitor what's going on in the ocean and how that impacts our global climate. Mm -hmm. We've talked a lot about really interesting satellites that are trying to achieve that. We talked about sending out robots into the ocean to try yeah. and understand this. This seems like one of the most realistic and cost-effective versions of that. One thing I also wanted to mention, so right now they've got the ability um, to control how deep these jellyfish swim um, just based on the pacemaker, which prompts them to swim and basically push themselves deeper into the ocean. Yeah. Um, one of the other things that they're planning on working on as well, which I think is pretty cool, is starting to learn horizontal control as well as vertical. So then they can truly just like hitch a ride, yeah. you know, put put these put these uh, uh, sensor packages on and hitch a ride on jellyfish. And then they can truly control the swarm of jellyfish swimming all over the ocean, which I think um, would be a lot more useful than maybe being just completely subject to underwater currents and stuff like that to control the horizontal orientation uh, of the jellyfish as opposed to just the, the vertical orientation it's an exciting time to be uh environmental scientist and a sci-fi fan because things are getting weird in a good way yeah i mean like quite quite literally no sensationalization about it at all these are cyborg Cyborgs. jellyfish <laughs> literally and they are going to be super awesome toward collecting data for us and I, I i would be remiss if i didn't mention um the reference to the spongebob movie um we were talking about this before we started recording. And I'm like, I feel like th this reminds me of something from pop culture. And for both, like, it's the chum buckets from the SpongeBob movie. And we rewatched the clip together. And it's like uh, these chum bucket helmets, and everyone's wearing them on their head. And then when they pull them on and it goes over their faces, they. <laughs> Uh, Plank zombies, plankton basically. gets complete control over yeah. them and plankton forces them to swim all throughout the ocean and then make their way to the chum, chum bucket, bucket um where they go and buy their burgers instead but i thought that was really interesting it, it seems like a pretty similar approach here right we're going to put these chum buckets on top of these jellyfish's head control them but in a more ethical way right Pl plankton is the super villain as opposed to in this case i feel like our marine biologists and our astrophysicists here that teamed up here from caltech are, are kind of like our superheroes and we can spin it however we want, but at the end of the day, we are plankton. That's what we've learned. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and on that dark note, would you like to uh, do us a favor and wrap up the episode? Yeah. All right. All right. Give uh, us a yell high five. Drop those bombs. This is crazy, man. But the secret to exploring the deep ocean mm -hmm. lies within jellyfish. Everyone says oceans are the last frontier, the last place on earth that we have yet to explore. And scientists have figured out a way to turn jellyfish into tiny little cyborg robots. They give them a special hat and a tiny computer brain. It helps them swim throughout the ocean. 
Jellyfish are already the most efficient swimmers in the ocean, and now they're going to start carrying a bunch of tiny tools and sensors to help us explore the deep waters of the ocean and share secrets about the ocean with scientists. Kind of reminds me of the chum bucket helmets in the SpongeBob movie, but in a more ethical way. Um, these jellyfish can swim four and a half times faster, and it's probably, as far as I've heard, the most cheap and most innovative way for us to start to learn about deep sea conditions will help us fill in the picture on what's going on in the ocean and also how that has an impact on our global climate. Boom. We need a soundboard because that that's a buzzer. Beep, beep. Burr, 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 burr. There you go. Yeah, rap that's, horns. That's what I was trying to yeah. do with the rap horn. Well, thank you folks for listening. And as always, we'll catch you in the next one. Peace. <laughs>